What's up? It's Ashlyn here. We are sharing right now. Skip it. Skip. Hello. Computer. <clears throat> hey, everybody. This is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching. Pause. Thank you. Okay, so here is Darren Van Dam from Flick Connection, and this is the Hidden Gems on Hulu. So, let's see if we'll be interested, if we'll watch it, any of that kind of stuff. Let's go. Watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and today we're going to be talking about 10 Hidden Gem movies currently available on Hulu. <laughs> Hold on, because I'm going to write that down. Ten hidden gems. The hell was that? <laughs> so this is going to be a ranked list. Oh, okay. I know this guy. He is so good. I love watching his videos. Of ten movies currently available on Hulu that are all hidden gems, meaning you probably haven't heard of them, at least not all of them. But we're going to start this list off all the way at the back at number ten with a very little-known movie that is going to be perfect for Curb Your Enthusiasm fans. Okay, one thing I'm going to do, we are going to run to the um, library and plug this in because I just got the 12%, as you can see in the corner there. The 12% with 15 minutes remaining, and this video is 15 minutes exactly, so that doesn't give it time to actually, um, that doesn't give it time to, you know, be able to, uh, <sighs> download and stuff, so I don't want to lose this content. So we are back in the library, and the light is kind of atrocious, kind of working for me, but yeah. All right, now we can get into it. Sorry. I didn't want to lose the footage. This stars Jeff Garland. It's called Dealing with Idiots, and it's kind of like watching an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. There's a very similar sense of humor to this. In fact, you can tell that Jeff Garland is essentially just taking the formula that he's learned after being on Curb Your Enthusiasm for so many years and just applying it to a nice, lighthearted movie. Garland Literally a movie that I, sounds like I would literally watch it because dealing with idiots is what I do almost on a daily basis. I mean, I work at a gas station off the interstate. We get a lot of uh, walks of life through there. And let me just say, some are not too bright. I love my job. He has another similar one on Netflix called Handsome, where he plays a detective. Again, very similar to the Curb aesthetic, except it's a little bit different. It doesn't have that Larry David touch, which I know is what makes Curb so special. But there's enough funny about dealing with idiots that I think Curb fans are going to absolutely love it. However, if that's not your brand of humor, don't worry. I've got plenty more to pick from on this list. However, my next pick has very few laughs in it. It is an indie horror flick called 12-Hour Shift. Now, this... Ooh, an indie horror flick is a hidden gem. As you guys know me, you know I absolutely love me my horror. So, that's like right up my alley and I am living for it. So, we shall see what they say about it. It's called 12 Hour Shift. Wonder where I can stream it. Wonder if it says where I can stream it. That'd be great. This is actually written and directed by Brie Grant, who you probably recognize from a ton of stuff, including Dexter. She was in one or two seasons yeah. of that show as well, and I always like her and everything, but she's behind the camera here and did an excellent job. Now, this is an indie horror flick, and I will say the narrative gets a little bit lost. It's not as tight as I would have liked, which is why it's at number nine, but it's still a really wild ride. It still looks fan-freaking-tastic. Um, by the way, I'm just going to go and do it now. I'm going to do the subscribe to me shout out. If you guys are horror fans like me, or you are movie buffs like me, or you just enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel. I would absolutely love and appreciate it so much. I'm doing everything in my power to make my experience on YouTube a good one. And I want 2022 to be my year. So subscribe to me and maybe give me some shout outs and things like that. 
on what to do next. Just thought. This also stars Angela Bettis, who is most famous for a movie called May, which is another hidden gem horror movie that I highly recommend. I just rarely see it on streaming services. She is excellent here. While some of the support May is on Voodoo, but it is not free, just so you know. I know exactly what he's talking about. I want to watch it so bad, but it's on Voodoo, but it's not free. It's like $6.99. The cast is pretty good. She really carries this thing and makes it work. And without giving anything away, essentially you're following a nurse on a 12-hour shift, and she may or may not be up to no good. There's some really great scenes here for an indie horror movie. I'm very interested to see what Brie Grant does next, because I thought she did a lot of clever things with this movie. I mean, it is not quite tied together in a neat package the way that I would like, but I think that's something that's going to come along with experience. So again, very interested to see what she does next. And I had a really great great time watching this movie even though it was really grim and really bloody now another bloody one that is really not that grim is called spontaneous this is a coming of age teen romance movie spontaneous i know what this one is i think no wait no that's not except in the background you've got this thing happening where People are just spontaneously exploding. And I don't mean they're like spontaneously combust. Yes, yes. I actually watched this and then I read the book by, oh crap. I think I have the book on my shelf somewhere, but I'm not 100% sure, but I know I read it. So it's flipped over. So, um, so it's a book. Um, it's a good book. Um, and then the movie, I think is Chef's Kiss. Phenomenal. Like. Uh, people exploding around you it is gory i will say it is gory but the character selection is spot on fantastic Sting. they're literally just popping like a balloon blood goes everywhere it's pretty gross the thing that i found interesting about spontaneous is that again that is in the background this is a coming of age teen romance and it's done quite well but all the people exploding and sort of the spontaneity of that that it could happen at any time is a little more of a metaphor for what it's like to be a teenager your whole life is about to change there's a lot of dread that comes with that and a little gimmick here of people exploding actually served a pretty good purpose it worked in the background is sort of adding this layer of tension to being a teenager. While it's not realistic, it was interesting and it made for a very different viewing experience than anything I've seen in quite a while. We've got a somewhat new release Western on the list and a couple of recent videos I've talked about how much I liked The Harder They Fall. I'm sorry, guys, I'm not. If you saw my last video, my last episode, I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a Western girl. Um, the only thing I think I've, no, no. If you have a recommendation of a Western that you really think I would enjoy, leave it in the comments. On Netflix, but I also explained that it is not a traditional Western. In fact, it feels much more like a stage play. If. Oh boy, a Western that feels like a stage play, even better. You were starved for an old-fashioned Western. I highly recommend checking out The Kid. This movie is loosely based on the true account of Billy the Kid's face-off with Sheriff Pat Garrett. I know I should be more interested in Billy the Kid. We have um, some type of plaque down in um, downtown here in Kansas. And we have like a museum based on Billy the Kid and stuff also. I guess we're on, like, reservation lands of all this great history and stuff. If you walk around downtown, there's plaques all over, like, for where buildings used to be, brothels used to be, and things like that. It's it's, it's kind of cool town, I'm not going to lie. And it's got the old um, brick roads down there, too. So. Played by Ethan Hawke. Vincent D'Onofrio also stars in this, and interestingly mm -hmm. enough, he actually wrote and directed this movie. And I think he did do a good job. My only nitpick is something very similar to what I said about 12-hour shift. It's not quite as tight and neat as you would like, but if you can go ahead and get that out of your head, it is a good Western with some really great acting, including a great role from Chris Pratt where he's playing a villain. He's going very against type. 
and he did a good job. He's not in the movie that much, but I did enjoy seeing him do something very different to what I'm used to. So all in all, kind of a mediocre Western, but again, if you're starved for one, it's been a while since you've watched kind of a classic one, then the kid is definitely going to fit that bill. Now, my next pick is one of the first movies I ever actually watched streaming on Netflix. It's an indie movie. Not many people know about it, even though it did kind of make the rounds during that time when there weren't many options on streaming services. However, it has been years since I've seen cash back available anywhere. This is a very low budget movie, but it is incredibly effective. Cash back is on Vudu and it's free. I know that because it's on my TBR or my T TBW, my to be watched list. Um, I have one on Hulu, I have one on Netflix, I have one on Shutter, I have one on Vudu, I have one on Tubi, I mean, anywhere that you can stream movies and stuff, I have a list started. Um, likewise, I have one started on there, so. Yep, it's supposed to be a good one. It's from 2006, though, so I'm a little worried considering they didn't have that much money to spend. In this movie, a young man he goes through a really traumatic breakup and develops insomnia. So his solution is to start working late nights at a grocery store. And during these sleepless nights in the grocery store, his imagination begins to run wild. He begins to act out some sexual fantasies. And the movie itself is kind of a sexy movie, but there's also a lot of really interesting relationship stuff going on as well. This is a slower paced indie movie, but if that's your bag, you like that kind of stuff, I highly recommend checking that out. However, if that is not typically the type of movie you watch, do not let me fool you with the clips I'm showing you here. Even though it looks like there's a lot of scantily clad women in this movie, that is not the reason to watch it. You're gonna be sorely disappointed but if you are interested in the concept, I can tell you for a fact that Cashback does deliver. <laughs> okay, before moving on to my top five on this list, I do want to tell you about today's sponsor. I know longtime subscribers are tired of hearing me talk about CyberGhost VPN, but the reason I feature them in so many videos is, one, because they do pay me to do that. But it is a VPN service that I use, and the reason I use it is not just because it keeps my web browsing safe, secure, and private. I use it because it lets me access a ton of other movies and shows with my existing Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video, and other streaming service accounts. Now, See, I think this is a great idea. However, I don't know what I would do. I know you can put certain codes into Netflix, and it brings up like a bigger variety of movies and stuff. Um, you can find the codes online anywhere, like just Googling Netflix codes. It'll pop it all up, so. What's that? Most streaming services block the use of VPNs so that you can't get around international licensing, but whatever device you stream movies on, whether it's a smart TV, an Apple TV, your computer, it's legally nobody's business where you are in the world, and you can easily just tell that device you're in France, Germany, Canada, and immediately access Netflix, Prime Video, Hulu, other streaming services in those countries, and they have vastly different offerings depending on where you are. And just as an example, look, I'll go, I'll open up my Cyber Ghost. Um, let's just pick, we type in Netflix. And let's just pick Netflix Italy. Load that up. And here we are, we're watching Netflix in Italy. I'm sorry, why would you show Netflix on a Hulu video? And they've got Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Baby Driver, American Psycho, Bad Boys for Life, 12 Strong, Doctor Sleep. I mean, stuff that is not on American Netflix, Joker, Interstellar, American Sniper, all this stuff. Look, and they're not in Italian or anything. They're all in English, and they're here in Italy. Look, Shazam, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. I mean, stuff that is just not available on American Netflix. It's so cool, and right now... My viewers can pay as little as $2.19 a month. That's less than it would cost to rent one of those movies. You can access loads of them using... Not true. You can go to Redbox and rent a movie for $1.85. Just kidding. Still love your videos though, dude. Your cyber ghost account immediately. And even if you're not very tech savvy, they have great 24 seven customer support. And beyond that, they have a 45 day money back guarantee. So there is virtually no risk. And you will be able to use cyber ghost on up to seven devices at the same time. Again, this is a no brainer. Just go to the link in the description, pay as low as $2.19 a month to access way more movies and shows than you could ever possibly hope to watch but speaking of movies and shows let's move on with the top five picks on this list 
My next pick is far and away the weirdest one on this list, but it's also far and away the weirdest one I've seen in quite a while. And longtime subscribers know I love weird movies, but Mandibles is actually from director Quentin Dupier. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his last name. Dupier. But he is famous for extremely bizarre movies, including Rubber, Wrong, and his last movie, Deerskin, which is another one I recommended. But I recommend them with the caveat that these are really only for people who like really bizarre movies. In fact, I think this fits the definition of avant-garde. So if that is not for you, do not come back here and blame me for picking this one. I'm giving you enough of a warning as who this movie is for. However, this is French language and a couple of bonehead... I don't even want to call them criminals, but a couple of goofball guys come into the possession of this gigantic housefly. I don't want to say chaos ensues. This movie actually has kind of a laid-back pace to it, but it has got some wild scenes in it, and the fly itself looks very convincing, which just works on a comedic level, and this is a funny movie if you allow what it to be. Now, it's not quite as funny as it would have been had I been speaking the native language. When you watch a movie with subtitles... The jokes do land, but the inflection and everything is very stiff. You can't really tell what words they're emphasizing. And so things aren't quite as funny. But that said, this movie was so interesting to me that I was enthralled all the way through. It's definitely different. Not something I would watch. I don't know. I like the movie Joe's Apartment. And I had, like, talking beetles or cockroaches. So I might watch it. <laughs> Keep in mind, this one's weird. It doesn't make any sense. It's supposed to be that way. But for entertainment value, if you like more bizarre stuff, this one is going to be right up your alley. That was like the cheesiest looking scream I've ever seen. Um, oh, the Super Bowl. It's alive, man. YouTube TV. Meet Suvi. Oh my goodness, there's so many commercials. Just kidding, there's not that many commercials actually, I'm surprised. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, I would watch The Fly for sure. And then I would definitely watch 12 Hour Shift because I love you some more. Hmm. Hmm, finish this video so I can lay down. Um, I have one more shift before my Monday day off. Oh no, I hit the wrong button. Skeet! Did it work? Whoa. Oh. Ah! What the I love? Now, for people who do like weird movies but think Mandibles is maybe a little bit too weird for them, I recommend checking out Stephen King's Thinner. This came out in 1996, and in this movie, an overweight man has a curse put on him by a gypsy, and he begins shedding weight fairly dramatically. This is actually directed by Tom Holland. No, not that Tom Holland. This Tom Holland, who is most famous for having directed Child's Play and Fright Night. So he's no stranger to the genre. And while Thinner does have a dated look, some of the makeup effects and things have not held up with time. They're not awful. You just have to keep in mind, this is a 1996 movie if you generally like movies based on stephen king King books this is one you should go for but it will feel dated compared to a lot of the stephen king movies coming out lately that's just the way it was and then oh i mean like okay so honestly on shutter there are a lot of like 1970 movies 1980s movies they're on my list like i will watch them they look good they look fun i i mean the first texas chainsaw massacre was from like a little bit older of a time as well and i absolutely love that so but uh definitely because this is stephen king i would definitely check it out because i love stephen king the 90s but if you like the concept then this one does deliver as just a weird fun kind of midnight movie my next pick is actually a really <laughs> funny documentary. It's called Too Funny to Fail. This is actually the story of the Dana Carvey show. Now, most of you will know who Dana Carvey is. He was the church lady and a bunch of other great characters on Saturday Night Live. Did you hear her? What? What? Hey. 
Uh, you, hi. Hello. Oh my goodness. What? Are you saying hi to everybody? Why are you on the paper? You know I'm writing, right? So you lay right on the notebook. Are you okay? What does it matter? What's wrong? You have food. You have water. You have a clean litter box. You just want mama? Yeah. Sorry. Cat came in. We're almost done anyways. Anybody got fur babies? They're amazing. How do you keep them on your videos, though, if you have them? Just curious. Including Garth from Wayne's World, so just comedic legend. And actually, when he left SNL, he had a really high status in the comedy community. And he was given his own sketch comedy show, the Dana Carter show which went down in glorious flames and this documentary captures all of it there's a ton of interviews with all the people who worked on the show and it's a really amazing story as to how they literally thought they were all too funny to fail and they did some horrendous stuff on primetime tv i mean the light spoiler here but the first episode came on after a really heavy episode of home improvement and i remember as a kid watching it I was way too young to be watching that type of content. It came on during prime time. It was wild stuff. And this documentary catches everything that happened then. And just this amazing downfall. But the show itself has some incredibly funny moments. If you're like me, and after watching this documentary, you get the itch to watch the Dana Carvey Show episodes, you can actually catch them out for free on Crackle right now. Yeah, you'll have to put up with a couple ads. But trust me, if the documentary makes you want to see the actual sketches, they're wilder than you can imagine. My next pick is another comedy from several years ago. And then my number one pick is one of my favorite Ooh. movies of 2021. But my number two pick is called In a World. And it's technically, I think, a romantic comedy. But the reason it gets such a strong recommendation from me is it doesn't follow any of the typical beats of a rom-com. This was actually written and directed by and stars Lake Bell, who is not only beautiful, but she's really funny and incredibly talented. This movie is so well written and really well directed, whereas I said some of the other ones that I enjoyed were a little loose. This is a very tight movie, and it's a crowd pleaser. I've showed this to groups of people that have absolutely enjoyed it. In this movie, she plays a voice actor who's trying to build her career and become quite famous in that community. Her father was this really famous one, and he's managing to sort of hold her down and some other people, but you've got a lot of really great comedy actors in this, including, obviously, Lake Bell, but also Dimitri Martin has a great role, Rob Corddry, Nick Offerman, Tig Notaro, Ken Marino. I mean, just really funny people, and the movie's just so well written. And this has a great charm and sensibility to it. This would make a great date night movie. Or if you're needing to pick something out and mix company, this would be a fantastic one to keep in your back pocket. And then finally, we will end this list with my number one pick, one of my favorite movies of 2021, even if it didn't quite make it into my top five. If you want to check out that video, I'll put a link in the description. But Pig, starring Nicolas Cage, is an exceptional film on many, many levels. I will say this is a slow paced Nicolas Cage movie. Do not go into this expecting typical Nicolas Cage, which is exactly what makes this movie work so well. They cast Nicolas Cage for a reason. One, he's able to do a lot of the subtlety and the really strong acting. And I don't mean the typical Nicolas Cage stuff. I mean just good, strong performance stuff. He's able to do that stuff. He just chooses not to most of the time. And what you get with Pig is something very different from what you're going to expect. And the movie, the filmmakers rather, do a great job of setting up some expectations you might have from watching years of Nicolas Cage movies and then immediately subverting them. And that is not a spoiler, by the way. I had the same thing explained to me by another reviewer before I watched this. And with every single scene in Pig, I did not know what was going to happen next, which is special. Now, that may be something you experience a lot, but for me, this is my career. I watch an ungodly amount of movies. And so I'm able to see things coming. They get telegraphed just because I understand the language of movies. From having watched so many of them, and Pig was speaking a different language, and I loved it for that. But that is the list. Of okay, so that was everything. I hope that you enjoyed that. Um, there are only a couple, like two, I think. Yeah, 12-hour shift and thinner that I really was interested in. A couple I've already seen. Um, one that's already on my TBW. Sorry, my foot's falling asleep. Uh, 
Okay. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!